No DLCs, expansions or sequels are coming for Borders Gate 3. Dragon's Dogma 2 enrages everyone with microtransactions and Margot Robbie eyes up The Sims. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. Borders Gate 3 fans, I'm sorry, there ain't gonna be a Borders Gate 4 or any DLC for 3. That was the announcement from Larry and Big Boss Sven Vink during a panel at the Game Developers Conference yesterday. It will be a shock to many, after all, Borders Gate 3 won countless Game of the Year awards, sold like a bazillion copies, and spawned endless swarms of fan art memes and, well, body pillows. Especially as it seemed DLC was something they were actually considering. In fact, Vine confirmed yesterday that they had actually started work on it. But ultimately, it seems the game's inherent ties to Dungeons & Dragons is what sealed the deal. He said, There are a lot of constraints on making D&D, and 5th edition is not an easy system to put into a video game. We had all these ideas of new combat we wanted to try out, and they were not compatible. The simple fact is, 5th edition is designed for tabletop role-playing, and while Larian did an outstanding job adapting it for a video game, in the end, a bespoke system will always function better. And it seemed everyone at Larian was happy with the decision. They had two games they had planned to make before starting BG3, and neither of them are Divinity Original Sin 3 either, so it really does look like we'll be getting something completely new. Plus, I can't help but feel Larian's relationship with Hasbro has at least something to do with this. A lot of the D&D team faced layoffs last year, and Vink has been pretty vocal about how none of the original Hasbro team that got the Borders Gate 3 deal through the door still work at the company. Like, the audacity to lay off those people when the game ended up being such a huge commercial success. Vink also mentioned his hatred of corporate greed in gaming while picking up an award at GDC. He said, I've been fighting publishers my entire life and I keep on seeing the same, same, same mistakes over and over. It's always the quarterly profits. The only thing that matters are the numbers. And then you fire everybody and then next year you say, I'm out of developers. Just slow down a bit. Slow down on the greed. Be resilient take care of the people, don't lose the institutional knowledge that's been built up by the people you lose every single time. It really pisses me off. And look, I love D&D and I love 5th edition, but let's not pretend that's what made Borders Gate 3 great. Larian made Borders Gate 3 great. And without the confines of that system, they'll make something even greater. He did hint that another developer may now carry the Borders Gate torch. So here's a question for you. Who would you trust to take on Borders Gate 4? And what are you hoping to see from Larian in their next game? Let us know in the comments. Surprise! Dragon's Dogma 2 has a whole bunch of microtransactions. It's quite the shock considering it's a single player action RPG costing $70. And while the game has reviewed incredibly well with critics, over on Steam the discovery has led to the game being review bombed to <laughs> and rightly so. Because after you've spent all that money, Capcom thinks it's acceptable to charge you even more. And here's the thing, they're not even just cosmetics, fast travel points, Rift crystals for hiring pawns and buying special items, revival consumables, a special camping kit that weighs less than normal ones. These are all things that you can buy for between one and five dollars. And it's so exhausting watching these companies go through all the effort of making a fantastic game just to shoot themselves in the foot with a shotgun. They release their incredible character creation early, get everyone excited with their insane creations, and then BOOM! It's not until release day that we're aware of a massive shopping page. It's almost like Sven Vink had a good point. And that's not the only issue. Once again, we've had a AAA game drop with massive performance issues on PC. Capcom themselves have acknowledged that a lot of the frame rate drops are due to each NPC on screen swallowing up a whole load of CPU usage. In fact, the issue is so bad, players are resorting to mass genocide in order to fix the performance of the game. Back to microtransactions though, and this is a trend Capcom keeps shoehorning into their games recently. And they keep getting away with it. If anything, they're getting rewarded for it. Just this week it was revealed that Capcom was the best rated publisher over on Metacritic last year. And now they've shown their true colours. Because squeezing every ounce of money out of their games is more important to them than respecting their fan base. And if they care about money so much, guess what you can do to send them a message? Stop buying their games. Because if they keep getting rewarded for this, not only do these practices get normalised, they will only get worse. Which brings me to the most ironic and perhaps hypocritical time to mention on new Patreon. 
Jinx Plus. The difference here is we're not trying to double already huge profits, we're trying to keep the lights on. Not only does it let you directly support the show, but you get exclusive content and all the news, docs and gameplay videos we make in one convenient place. No pressure though, a like and subscribe, hell, just you being here is more than appreciated. The Sims is getting a movie made none other by Margot Robbie's production company. Lucky Chap are currently riding the successes of Barbie and Saltburn, two very different movies from last year, and Loki director Kate Heron has been attached to the film. And I'm interested to see what they do here. It feels right for a Truman Show-esque storyline where all the characters suddenly realise they're just pawns in another person's game. In fact, it could become quite a sick, twisted thriller, depending on who exactly they put as the player. Hopefully it's not you. I see you removing the ladder from the pool yet again. But maybe that's just wishful thinking from me. I've I've just finished the first season of Severance and that's very much left me on my knees gagging for more messed up mind-bending mayhem. Realistically, they'll probably strike a PG-13 balance like they did for Barbie and you know what, that worked brilliantly for Barbie and hopefully it'll be the same for The Sims. There's no casting news as of yet, so it's still likely quite a way away. On Monday, we told you all about how the Apex Legends North American Finals was shut down after several pro players were hacked. Well, the hacker has since been named as Destroyer2009, which either makes him a teenager or a fan of this comic from 2009. It's not the first time Destroyer's been in the spotlight. In fact, if you play Apex, you've probably heard of him. He caused quite a bit of a stir by requesting that all Apex accounts be given 2000 Apex packs, which didn't go down well with Respawn. They were probably even more vexed when just last month he gave away free Apex packs himself, which implies that he has access to some of the code that plebs like you and me aren't privy to. Well, Destroyer was interviewed by TechCrunch and he said that he hacked the NA Finals for fun, which explains the incredibly dumb vote Putin tick box on the UI. But he went on to say it was also to force Respawn to fix the vulnerability that he exploited. He said, not many people would have used an exploit like that in an absolutely innocent way for players. Just imagine if it wasn't a joke and we didn't put any memes in the cheat. I'm pretty sure you can ruin someone's career if they had a cheat pop up on a tournament. And like bro, disrupting a whole esports tournament isn't exactly innocent. He also went to say that he targeted the two players who went viral, Jem Burton and Imperial Hal, because they're just nice guys and he wanted to give them free attention and views. But I don't know, as we saw in the videos, both looked pretty panicked and despite the newfound attention, they probably bricks and kept bricks for a fair while after the hack. Respawn have provided an update claiming that their teams have deployed the first of a layered series of updates to protect the Apex Legends community and create a secure experience for everyone. So it does look like Destroyer's actions worked, but what do you think? Did he have more nefarious reasons for the hack or was this all to give Respawn the wake up call that was truly needed? That's the week and that is the show. Have a great weekend. Off I go.